Dear viewers, you are my greatest inspiration. You have supported me all these years. Your kind words of appreciation motivate me to keep making more videos. Welcome to my quantum physics video lesson series. This video series is a full package or information bank. The viewers are advised, and encouraged, to watch each and every video lesson in this video series, in order to perceive the background concept. These seven distinct video lesson episodes are a thought-provoking journey through the subatomic world. This particular video here, offers an exclusive lecture on the key subtopic double slit experiment. Is light really wave? Or, particle? Have you often pondered over how quantum physics is rather philosophy than mathematical derivation? Philosophy? Or physics? Well, that's what we say about cosmology. Right? The esoteric dispute over wave-particle duality. When and how did the shift in balance of conception ensue? ancient views about the nature of light wave nature versus particle nature of light and electromagnetic wave is an often cited century-old esoteric debate isaac newton's corpuscular view continued to receive unanimous support as the community of erudite scholars and academicians back then either surmised or conceded as revealed in the publication excerpts Eventually the substantial transformation, a sea change, transpired. By the 17th century, Christian Huygens, and then, since the 19th century, Thomas Young, and Arthur Compton, turned out to be the three veritable instigators, of the tilt in the balance of conception, which emphatically shifted the description of light, towards one side or the other. Later on, Louis de Broglie, who spoke so vehemently of matter wave, played a key role in unraveling the mystery. Sir Isaac Newton, the most enigmatic supreme genius in the history of science, is highly regarded for his laws of motion, gravitation, and nature of white light. Christian Huygens was the first to describe light as traveling in waves, proposed in 1678, whilst, Isaac Newton thought, light was composed of tiny particles. Christian Huygens brought about an entire new perspective of optics.
According to Huygens' wave model of light, every point, on a wavefront, is itself source of spherical wavelets. The sum of those spherical wavelets forms the wavefront. Huygens' model of light, which provided a new understanding of optics, assumes light behaves as a longitudinal wave, characterized by oscillation, crests, troughs, and amplitude. He further proposed that a primary wavefront can be perceived as infinite number of points, each point generating a secondary wavelet in a spherical manner. The interference of these secondary wavelets creates wavefronts of varying shapes and direction. Back then, this model was able to explain most of the properties of light, including refraction, reflection, as well as diffraction. By 1770, two apparently incompatible theories of light were in competition. Christian Huygens formulated wave theory of light. The undulatory theory that light is transmitted as waves, was proposed by Huygens in 1678, and published in 1690. Newton vs. Huygens Newton was interested in light, from very early on in his career. For various reasons he favored the particle theory of light, which rationalizes, rectilinear propagation of light. However, Huygens supported wave theory of light, which is by far, his most important contribution to science. He demonstrated wave interference, arguing, that wave theory supports reflection and refraction. Now, hold on a minute, buckle up. Ready to hear something rather dramatic? Even though, Newton's corpuscular model of light, failed to account for color, polarization, interference, and diffraction of light, his theory generally prevailed. On the other hand, despite Huygens' commendable accomplishments, Huygens' principle wasn't even indisputably approved, or formally accepted, until Thomas Young's double-slit experiment turned up as the first firm support, in favor of Huygens' wave model of light. Thomas Young, first let the sunlight rays pass through a single slit, on a screen, to produce coherent light. This light was then projected onto a pair of parallel vertical slits, or twin slits. It caused diffraction of the incident illumination. Coherent wavefronts, emerged simultaneously from each slit in concentric circles. The result of interference between the two discrete coherent diffracted light waves, was visualized as corresponding variations in the interference intensity distribution patterns. Young's experiment was based on the hypothesis, that if light were wave-like in nature, then it should behave in a manner similar to ripples on water. He was the one who first came up with the term, interference fringes.
Okay. What if we are throwing grains of sand, or salt, through the double slit? The grains will pile up in two separate clusters, right in front of each slit. Like this, right? If we hold on to the classical physics theory, it was predicted that the particle nature of light would produce results different from Young's. A beam of photons directed at the slits, was expected to be separated by the slits, into two parallel photon beams, simply creating, two light fringes in front of either slit, just like Sands did, right? However, this did not happen. In 1909, Jeffrey Taylor conducted an experiment, in which he showed, that even the weakest light source, such as equivalent to a candle, burning a mile away, is still capable of producing interference fringes. Alright then, here we come up with a whole bunch of questions. Photon Gun Experiments Here let me tell you a series of incredibly amazing stories. Look out for the striking conflicts between facts, logical expectations, actual observations, and perplexing mysteries. Keep watching.
What does that tell us? What have we learned from this? Photons are emerging through the pair of slits, as two discrete coherent wave sources, and eventually undergoing wave interference. They fail to do so, when they only have one slit available to pass through. That means, one single slit instead of double, eliminates, the feasibility of interference. With a purpose to establish true wave nature of photons, we need to explore how else one can prevent the interference. Well, how about we go down to a single photon instead of a beam of photons? No wonder, a stream of photons generate interference, but a single photon alone wouldn't be able to do so, right? Let's find out. Let's make it more difficult and complicated for the poor photons, shall we?
If, one performs the same double slit experiment, where, grains of sand or other particles are fired through the slits, what would happen? Each particle would go through one or the other slit, and would end up with a very different pattern on the sensor screen, compared to the interference pattern, seen produced from waves. We understand clearly, that waves and particles produce a very different pattern, so it should be easy to distinguish between the two, right? Well, this is where the double slit experiment gets a bit mysterious. When we perform the same experiment with photons, which are still particles, but tiny particles of light.
in rather modern version of the double slit experiment, performed using electrons. Electrons with the same momentum are fired from an electron gun. As more and more electrons pass through, they form the typical pattern of light and dark interference bands. If each electron was truly just a point particle, then there would only be two clusters, one for the electrons passing through the left slit, and one for the right. However, if electrons are made of waves, they would pass through both slits simultaneously, and would interfere with themselves. In fact, precisely this is what is observed, when the double slit experiment is performed using electrons. It's justifiable, that the stream of billions of electrons, interfere with each other, and produce the interference pattern. But then again, the interference pattern remains, even when we fire the electrons one by one, so that they have no chance of interfering. How can this be? Okay, let's rephrase it. When electrons are being spied on, they act in a way so they don't get caught in the act of performing their quantum nature. It's rather perplexing to envision, how one single photon or electron as a wave, would hit both slits simultaneously, or alternatively, it's splitting, and going through each slit separately.
In Young's double slit experiment, light is sent through two vertical slits, and is diffracted into a pattern of vertical lines, spread out horizontally. In order to perform this experiment, he generated two coherent light sources, using diffracted light from a single slit. Please note, that without diffraction and interference, the light would simply make two illuminated lines on the screen. Which is not the case. In Thomas Young's brilliant double slit experiment, the central region of the fringe system is brightly lit. If light travels in a straight line, the central region should appear dark instead, which is the shadow of the space between the two slits. Which is not the case. objective of Thomas Young's double slit experiment was to verify the wave nature of light, as well as to demonstrate the theory and principle of interference, and the concept behind diffraction. Double slit experiment is so far one of the most bizarre experiments in the history of physics research. It also stands out as the heart and soul of quantum mechanics. The double slit experiment can be regarded as the ultimate key to perceive the microscopic world. Ready lecture notes, and study materials, are available on request. Please use the comments section below, for further academic discussions. Viewers suggestions, and ideas of new video lesson topics, are gratefully appreciated. Stay tuned for more uploads. Please remember to like, subscribe, share,